Hi guys, I'm Heidi. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my Nonfiction November TBR. Nonfiction November is hosted by Olive over at A Book Olive and her team, and it is all about celebrating nonfiction. And the idea behind this is to read at least one nonfiction book in November. And to make things more exciting, there are also um, optional challenges that you can complete. Um, these challenges give you one word prompts and you have to read a book corresponding to each of these prompts. The prompts this year are time, movement, buzz and discovery. What is great about these challenges is that you can interpret them as loosely or as literally as you want. I'm definitely going to be taking a lot of liberties with these challenges and that is part of what makes this so fun. And if you don't want to complete the challenges at all, um, that's fine as well. Um, I think what is great about this initiative is that it allows people to participate in whatever capacity they're most comfortable with. I don't really read much nonfiction, so I'm trying to take this as an opportunity to read some more. Um, this is my second year participating in Nonfiction November. Last year I read four books in November and I also completed all of the challenges and I had so much fun with it. Um, and I decided to participate again this year. I have chosen more or less two books uh, per challenge. I don't know if I'll be able to finish them all, but I definitely like to have some choice and I'll be doing my best to get to most of them. So the first challenge is Time. And for this one, I've chosen Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Um, so this is about sleep and sleeping is something that we spend a lot of time doing, uh, which is why I've included this in this challenge. The author delves deeper into the whole topic of sleeping and um, what happens, for example, during REM sleep, how do caffeine and alcohol affect sleep, um, why do our sleeping patterns change as we get older. Um, so it seems like a very fun and informative read. The second book that I've chosen for this challenge is SBQR by Mary Beard. This has been on my TBR for a long, long time, and that is partly why I've chosen it for this challenge. Um, and I guess it's also a bit like going back in time. This is about ancient Rome. I was interested in ancient Greece when I was a teenager, and I was reading everything I could about that time period. Um, but I don't really have nearly as much knowledge about ancient Rome, so I'm excited to get to this. I also read um, Women and Power by the same author last year, which is her essay collection, and I read it for Nonfiction November, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy SBQR as well. The second challenge is Movement, and I've got three books in this challenge because um, one of them is really tiny. For this challenge, I have two books that are on the social movement side of things. I've got No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. This is a collection of speeches by Greta Thunberg, um, who is the young climate activist who whose speeches have been inspiring people all over the world to reconsider their um, actions and choices when it comes to climate change. I haven't been following her speeches super closely, um, but I do think that her message is important and I'm looking forward to reading this little book. I've then got um, A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This is an extended essay taken from various lectures that Virginia Woolf gave in 1928, and it is one of the most inspiring feminist texts ever written, so I'm very eager to finally get to it. My copy also includes Three Guineas, which is another non-fiction essay by Virginia Woolf, and if I have the time I will be reading that one as well. And then finally for this challenge I have Ayoade on Top by Richard Ayoade. This is a bit of a stretch, but it is a book that is about a film that is about flying, which is, you know, going from place to place, which is why I'm including this in the movement challenge. It's Richard Ayoade's very funny take on the 2003 film View from the Top, starring Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow plays an air stewardess in that film, and it is a terrible film, which in turn makes this book funny. Um, I heard Richard Ayoade talk about this book in um, the Graham Norton show, and it sounded really, really funny and a lot of fun, and I decided to pick it up for this challenge. The third challenge is Buzz, and I'm interpreting this challenge in two different ways. Um, so first of all, I'm going to be reading a very buzzy book, and that is Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. This is currently a very popular book on Booktube and elsewhere. I remember reading her um, other graphic novel, Hyperbole and a Half, a few years ago, and I didn't really get along with it that well. For some reason, I couldn't really connect to it. Um, it wasn't a book that I particularly enjoyed, but I am curious to find out 
um, whether my opinion is going to be different now that I'm older and have gone through some difficult stuff um, in life myself. And then I'm also interpreting Buzz as music and I'm going to be reading It's the World's Birthday Today. And this is by Flake, who is um, the keyboard player for the German band Rammstein, which is a band that I really like. And this is basically Flake's account of what it is to be a touring musician. And I've already heard some good things about this. I've heard that it's honest and well written and also well translated, which is um, always a good sign. I'm going to be listening to this on audio mostly because I can't really get hold of it in any other way. I sometimes find it difficult to enjoy audiobooks which is why I don't really listen to that many of them, um, especially when it comes to fiction. Like I can't stand it when um, narrators do voices for characters, like I just can't. Um, but it's a lot easier with non-fiction, so I'm really hoping that the narrator did a good job with this one. The final challenge is Discovery, and for this challenge I'm going to be reading Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. This is the November pick for the Genre Readers Book Club, and this is all about um, space travel, um, life without gravity, and in general um, the science of life in space, and it sounds like a very good read. And I'll also be picking up The Lost City of Z by David Gran. In this one, David Gran is trying to solve the mystery of what happened to the British explorer Percy Fawcett and his quest for the lost city of Zed. In 1925, Percy Fawcett ventured into the Amazon um, to find an ancient but lost civilization, um, but he never returned, and this is David Grant's attempt to find out what happened to him. I love narratives set in jungles and tropical environments, so I am very excited to get to this. So these are all the books that I'm going to be reading for Nonfiction November. If you have any plans for Nonfiction November, let me know what they are. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what your thoughts were. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!